Good morning, everyone. It's ready. Thank you. Good morning to each and every one of you. Let us stand for a short devotional period. What a fellowship, what a Lord divine leaning on the everlasting on. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting on. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen come on in what do we believe in please let me allow them to get in maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to each and every one. Our scriptures for today, or our title for today's lesson is God foretells redemption. We will be coming from Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 13. I will read one verse and you will read the other. Beginning. First of all, let us read the key text together. Uh, you may not have it. It's verse 40. I mean, uh, chapter 49, verse 8. Thus saith the Lord. In an acceptable time, I have heard thee. And in a day of salvation, have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritage. Isaiah 49 and 8. Beginning. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Though Israel be not gathered, Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhor, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time, have I heard that thou mayest say to the prisoners go forth to them that are in darkness show yourselves they shall feed in the ways and their pastors shall be in all high places. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. All sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Amen. This morning, we will have Reverend Dr. Kena come and present our lesson to us. Thank you. Amen. 
Good morning to everyone. I want y'all to know that everything that could have happened did happen. Got ready to get in the car and the mirror just fell off and I was afraid to travel with no, no view mirror. So we couldn't get it on and we decided to come on anyway. But to God be the glory. Amen. Father, we pause now that we might teach your word. Father, we pray that you would come with clarity, come with understanding, oh God, that we may understand what is good and perfect in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, God. Amen and amen. amen. I don't have any glasses today. I had to borrow Brother Keenan's, so if I... <laughs> he's like a, a, a three, and I, I just only need him for close-up reading. But. To God be the glory. Today we are studying about God foretells of redemption. We see that from last Sunday's lesson up until now, God, God is showing uh, love and, and commitment that he's expecting from his people. Israel is here. Uh, determined to be God's servant. So I want to ask the question, what is a servant? Anybody know what a servant is? What well, is a servant? Commonly we say one who serves, right? Yeah. Amen, one who serves, one that is prepared to, to do the will and the works of the Lord. Israel here, once again, is God's servant. And he is the Messiah who has formed from his mother's womb to be a servant. And I key verse, thus said the Lord in a time of favor. Mm -hmm. I have answered you on a day of salvation. I have helped you. I have kept you and given you a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritages. Here, in our Sunday school lesson, and I wanted to take copies for everybody, but I didn't have no idea the price of that, and our computer isn't working. But I want to read the introduction. I gave the pastor a copy, and if you just follow along with me a little while, thank you. In lesson one, we saw God laying out the charges against Babylon and setting the, desolate, the destruction and adulterous people. This overthrow of Babylon, Israel's oppressor, would give Israel hope, relief, and liberation. For most people, that would have been enough, but not for God. God wanted his people to have more than a few years of earthly liberation and peace. The Lord wanted them to have freedom and peace forever. Therefore, the almighty, gracious creator, set in place a plan for his everlasting peace and freedom. Yes. The heart of the plan was to send into the earth God's suffering servant to lay the groundwork for eternal liberation. He's doing it today. He's preparing teachers, preachers, exhorters, missionaries. These people are all uh, God has chosen to be servants. The set text contain one of what is commonly called the servant songs of servant poem. These are four passages, and it goes on to give some scriptures, and I won't read those, which reveal the person, the service, and the mission, and eventually exaltation of the suffering servant of God. Therefore, see in the text God's preview to Israel of the time of the total liberation and the identity of the liberator. From my experiences with movies, we know the power of the preview. Amen. We always see a preview before the, the, the main uh, event. You would recall that this is the first lesson we said Israel could not hope to free itself militarily from the domination of Babylon. 
We know that they were under the, the, the Babylonians' uh, judgments. In like manner, Israel and the whole world could not save themselves from the power of sin. Humanity needed help to be free. So God was offering that help through his suffering saints. Yeah. And over in uh, a little portion of telling the Bible, and, and I'm not going to read all of this. We're going to get to uh, the reading of the, uh, the lesson itself. Humanity needed help to be freedom. So God was offering that help through his suffering uh, servant. For the sake of clarity, we acknowledge that there are there is some debate about the identity of the suffering saint into the four servant songs. In this lesson, we take the view that it is first case. The term refers to the nation of Israel through whom God will reveal his redeeming power. However, in the second instant, the term describes the person and the work of the Savior, Jesus Christ. While we want to keep his approach as simple as possible, we cannot avoid justification for our position. Considering these three of the texts in which Israel is clearly identified by name, contrast this with verse seven, in which the servant is not Israel, but the redeemer of Israel. Note the clear transition from the nation of Israel to the Redeemer of Israel. Unless we see this transition, we cannot interpret the text logically. Yeah. Uh, and down at the bottom, uh, at, well, you don't have a page, but anyway. After that, we want to focus on the role of the servant in the prophecy. A modern idea of the servant could hurt our appreciation for the servant Isaiah saw. In the prophecy, the term servant is related to a trusted ambassador. Yeah. Think of yourselves as being ambassadors to who? The kingdom of God. God has chosen us, has ordained us, that we might do the works of him, amen, to telling the people about the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Of course, the servant is slow, but only in regards to his master. Think of the ambassador to the United States, United Nations. The person serves as pleasure of the country's leader. Hence, ambassadors must do the will of the country they sent. What is that telling us as Christians, as believers, as leaders who have been sent out? We're not going out on our own agenda. We're going out on the word of God. Thus says the Lord, we ought to be ready as we minister to people. We ought to be ready to tell them, for it is written. If we stick with, for it is written, then we won't have to come up with our own ideas. I use a saying sometimes, you won't have to be up above it. You know what up above it is? Somebody asks you something, you know, up above it, you get up. So we don't have to do that. We can just come straight with the word and allow the word to, to free us. As Christians, we accept that Jesus Christ gave us perfect portrait of servant leadership. And he did. He whom he has called, he justified. He sanctified. Amen. So there shouldn't be any question as to our leadership because we have been sent from the Lord. We know what he expects of us and we plan to do it. Amen. Let's look at the, uh, the word itself. All right. Amen. Amen. See, we got to understand God equips us. We just can't, as I said earlier, we just can't say anything because the spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you when to and when not to. And 
as I'm picking in clergy now. <laughs> Sometimes uh, pastors, they go beyond in their, in their, in their messages what God has not told us to say. Not only do we lose the congregation, but we become confused ourselves when we don't follow the guidelines of, 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 of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Ghost is not gonna let you get up there and say one thing and you're supposed to be saying something else. If you are focused in the word, and you're depending on the Holy Spirit for guidance. Let's look at verse one. Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken ye people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, as he made mention of my name. A servant's point the duty of his calling by God to lead both the Israels, both Israel and the nation. It's like a prophet of the Lord who's qualified and to call to restore the nation to God. The owls refer to the Gentiles. When we read, anybody got a napkin, please sign us as this. I got some in my, in my, in my purse there, please. Thank you. Owls refers to the Gentiles when we read Genesis 10 and 5. If they were the people that were far off, they were strangers to the commonwealth of Israel and those that were still afar off. God called them from his mother's womb. Thank you so very kindly. I'll just put it in. Thank you. Called him from his mother's womb to the office nominated to be the servant. He called him Jesus, yeah. a savior by angels who shall save the people from their sin. This is what Matthew recorded in 121. The same was like Jeremiah. Remember when Jeremiah tried to plead that he was a child, he couldn't talk and all of this when God had wanted him to speak to the people. And God told him, Jeremiah, I ordained you when you were in your mother's womb. So don't think that God only uses you when you are here and then he gives you an assignment. What's for you in life is imputed in you at the time of conception. Y'all hear what I say? So we can't say, well, uh, this child is going to be bad because his daddy was bad. No. No, that's not so. Whatever qualities that God wants us to have at the moment of conception, all of these things are put in there. And then as you grow, and when you are born, and then when you start growing up and maturing, then these things are manifest. You start to do. I see a lot of time on, on my Facebook, there's a little young guy. I, he can't be more than eight, nine, preaching up a storm. Yeah, yeah. And people say, ooh, he, 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 he practicing what he sees in the book. No, no. God could have ordained that child at the time of an inception. Amen. Let's look at verse two. Verse two. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hands has he hit me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver has he hit me. As I said, God equipped him with the service that he was supposed to perform. And he made his, his mouth like a, a sharp sword. What do sharp sword do? The Bible say the word of God is what? Quick. 
Hallelujah. Which means that when we speak the word to, uh, to those that don't know the Lord, it ought to have some kind of effect. Peter, I, I think it is in, in 1 Peter 3.15, I believe, says that we ought to be ready always. Not just on Sunday morning. Always to tell every man of that hope that's in you. Why do you sing? Why do you pray? Why do you preach? Tell them of that hope that's within you. But then there is some, some way well, you have to do it. You have to do it with meekness, Peter says. And you have to do it with fear. I've never seen anybody preaching the gospel and just grinning up a storm. <laughs> How are you going to convince somebody, compel somebody to come to Christ? You know, Coca-Cola didn't get to be the nation's greatest soft drink. It didn't, didn't just go and say, well, that's Coke, here's Pepsi, here's. No. It got to be through advertisements. Coke is it. Nothing like Coke and all the other commercials and, and, and little things that they say. They boost it up so people can enjoy it. So what do we do through the word of God? We ought to put it in a position where it's going to help somebody. And then let me just throw this in here. Sometimes you can tell too many examples. When we are ministering to people, it's not always good to tell them, but you know, I used to. No, 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 no. Leave that out. Tell them where you are right now. But you can tell them in a way they think, well, okay, you ain't been so lily white all your life. But you don't have to stress that. All right, let me get back to this. Uh, the two-edged sword in Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick and it's powerful. That's what I'm talking about when you start ministering to people. You ought to handle it like it's quick. You ought to get happy telling somebody about Jesus. But if you ain't happy, yeah. all right, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of thought and intent of the heart. That's the word of God, which comes out of the mouth. This is what he's saying here. Comes out of the mouth. In Revelation 19 and 15, out of the mouth goes a sharp sword that would smite the nation and rule with the rod of iron. And in his quivers, he hid me, meaning that he was concealed. Whenever we are sent out as a servant of the Lord, he protects you. Remember when David had had um, was running from Saul mm -hmm. and then God hid him behind a, a spider web mm -hmm. and he was so close to soil he could have reached out cut a piece of his garment yeah. but David was shielded and he does that for us we cannot be afraid or ashamed to be a servant of God because he protects you. Before he sends you, he's already been there. We just have to follow the way. Amen. Verse three. And send unto me, thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Thou art my servant, meaning that I have employed you and will prosper you. Remember when, when Jacob had wrestled with the angels, yeah. wrestled all night long, wrestling so until his hip joint got out of place there. Yeah. And his name was established then mm -hmm. because he wouldn't let go. Yeah. And that's the way we ought to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not just Sunday servants. Yeah. Yeah. Not just when somebody asks us to do something. Mm -hmm. There ought to be times when you ought to make yourself available yeah. to do something. Yeah. Why? Because we are all in this together. Yeah. We all have the same story. We might tell it a little bit differently. Amen. We all sing the same song, but your melody might be a little different from mine. But we are all in this together. Uh, verse four. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. See how he is, is giving God credit. You know, I labor. We're going to labor in being servants. We're going to spend some, some tired hours. We had almost a lot was so tired. I just need to take me a nap. Okay. But we're not giving up. This is a continuous journey that we're on. It's not given to the swift. A what? The strong, but what? Say that again. We got to keep on enduring. We're going to get tired, but God is going to give us a little resting time. And not only are you going to rest, but you're going to come back full force. Amen. Amen. Let's see what the, and if, if somebody want to say, I have no problem with you interjecting at, at any time. Uh, Let's look at, I think here, let's look at the application, life application. How does this apply to us? Yeah. In life, we come face to face with some ironies, mm -hmm. meaning some contradictions that arrest our attention. For example, as a rule of life, People who are truly powerful and understand the responsibility of power do not go around showing off their ability to impress others. <laughs> also, people who are rich, really wealthy, and can buy the clothing store in the block, it is and don't feel the social pressure to be among the first to wear new clothes styles. Because you own it, you don't have to flaunt it, you know. Yeah. Sooner or later, people, people will find us out. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the life of our Savior Jesus gives us a giant paradox to consider. How could the Redeemer of the world, the only begotten Son of the Almighty Jehovah, the miracle worker, live the life of a lowly suffering servant? And he did. He said, foxes got holes. Birds of the air got nests, but the son of man what? Has nowhere to lay his head. Meaning that he was always on the go. The key to this uh, riddle is in definition of the word servant. A servant has no will or purpose for existing except the will and the purpose of his master. That's it. Jesus alluded to this on many occasions, for example, my nourishment, which means the food, comes from doing the will of God, who sent me, and from finishing his work. John says, 9 and 4, I must work the works of him that sent me. When? While? While is For when night cometh, you know, I used to think that when midnight came, you know, no. But when obstacles come your way, you get sick or you get elderly or you come down with the Ryder brothers or whomever, yeah, yeah. you won't have a chance to do it. Yeah. So do it while the sun is still shining. I often tell my dear husband, don't y'all tell him I told you, but he loves to sleep. And I'm an early bird. I'm, I'm, I'm up early. And he'll say, you, you up? I, yeah. But why are you up so early? I said, let me tell you something. I got longer to sleep 
that I have to keep these eyes open. So as long as I can keep these eyes open, they're going to stay open. Because one day I'm going to sleep forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, all of us who name the name of Christ must stop often and ask ourselves how well we follow Jesus' example in being a servant. We're going to stop right there. How well do we handle ourselves in being a servant to the Lord? Anybody? Anybody? Y'all can talk. Come on. The question is, how well do we conduct ourselves as an example of Jesus being a servant? With us being a servant. How do how how can we say that? That is the ultimate of being a good servant, showing love. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, me. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Loving one another. Amen. Amen. One of the commands of God. All right. We're up to questions. Let's ask some questions. What is your mental image? Almost like the one we just answered image of a servant and did the life of Jesus fit that image? What is it that we are doing that we can relate to? Okay, well, Jesus did that. Anybody? I'll give you an example. Go ahead. Yes, yes. And Jesus went out his way to help everybody. It just wasn't a certain group or uh, you know, people, but he helped everybody. Matter of fact, he got in trouble because the people felt that he shouldn't have been doing it. You know? So how does that fit our heart description? Are we gonna stop uh, being a servant because somebody else is talking about us? Somebody is criticizing you? Every time I look up the pastors at the hospital, you gonna stop going? Every time I look up, the missionaries got some cake going to Sister So and So's house. Is that going to stop you? No. Yes, sir, Pastor. I think also because uh, we should not allow what somebody said by somebody else to cause us not to want to be. Amen. 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 That's true. Yes, Amen. Amen. What message did God send to believers by branding Jesus as a suffering Savior? What message did God send to the believers? That's us. By branding Jesus as a suffering Savior. God expect of us. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is. It is. Amen. Do you know the overall uh, reason why people are afraid to minister or be a servant? 
because they're afraid of their feelings being hurt. And I remember in my early years of ministry and they were saying, well, you better not go talk to so-and-so, they're gonna hurt your feelings. Yeah. Well, I was picked out to be picked on. <laughs> And the Lord didn't tell me everybody was going to agree with me and everybody was going to love me. But I still have to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ that's in me. They're going to have to see him in me in order for them to believe. But if I go there and let them put me on their level of thinking, then they sit back and laugh. Oh, I know she wasn't what she thought she was. Okay. Let's look at verse three and we're going to be finished. John Wycliffe withstood threats, persecutions, brief imprisonment, and shaming to defend his faith and convictions. How far are you willing to go to defend your Christian faith? How willing, how far are we willing to go to defend it? When I was in seminary, they, we had some missionaries to come in, some foreign missionaries, and one was from Indonesia. And he told us about a situation over in his country, and the rebels had come in, and, and they had, um, they had uh, put a, 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 what do you call it, when somebody tie you up at the mouth and won't let you talk, whatever that is and uh, had their hands tied behind them and made them get on their knees. And they had a gun, three guys. And he said, he went to the first one, he says, I want you to deny Jesus, or I'll blow your brains out. He said, well, do it now. He said, well, he wasn't a son of God and he fictitious, da, 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 da. He killed him and he was fine came to the second guy, and he says this was true. Came to the second guy, and he did the same thing. The guy was afraid for his life, and he, did, he denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when he came to the third guy, wow. he said, I want you to do the same. You deny him. He is not real. He is not the son of God. He is not the savior of the world. He cannot save you. Mm -hmm. And said, so the guy looked up and said, shoot me. Yeah. And he did not pull the trigger. So what do you think happened in that effect? The guy that was the, the, the shooter was influenced by the fact this man refused to deny the man that he trusted, who was Jesus Christ. And that's the way we ought to be in life. Many times people do deny Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Peter didn't know he was going to deny him either. Yeah. Amen. But he, you scared for his life. Mm -hmm. But there is nothing, should be nothing, that would allow us to fall into that realm of trying to deny your Savior. Yet nobody in this room has ever seen him. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Nobody. That's what the Bible says. But through faith, I believe that he's God's only begotten son. I believe that he came down through this generation to save the people from their sin. That's my faith, and nobody will ever make me deny it. Amen. Any questions? Yes, ma'am.
They will go door to door. Mm -hmm. they, they are consistent, but we are not. Mm -hmm. We wait until they come to us before we you know, All right. defend ourselves. All right. And that's another, another example of how you know we can stand up uh -huh. for what we believe in. All right. Amen. Yeah, one of my local streets of the uh, Casa Rocha. They came out of the Jewish town. Talk about black Israelites. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most Jewish Israelites. And uh, I said, yeah, I said, Jesus, he, uh, he loves everybody. He loves everybody. We are, uh, yeah, we black and uh, call of God, but at the same time, you know, we just can't separate ourselves from everybody else because uh, Jesus died for everybody. Amen. So we are the good like, witches. Amen. Amen. And, uh, so we have to, you know, they don't, everybody don't believe in, and plus it's being black. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, there is a life, but then also Jesus died, gave, you know, gave, and you know, you all the Well, if there are no more comments or questions, I will not give it back to the pastor, and he will in turn go to the superintendent. like to have a word elder all right thank you well it's been so good to see each and every one of you <clears throat> today we thank you the members here at Wayman Chapel AME Church where the Reverend Alan D. Edwards is our pastor for joining us today for Sunday school we hope that and pray that you will be joining us also for our Sunday service that is also going to be on zoom if there are no further items and all of our minds are clear. Let us all stand and we will repeat the misfit. May the Lord watch between me and thee when we're absent one from the other. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.